good morning, it's Dr. Nelly. I'm on my five minute drive here. Uh, thought I'd say hello to you, happy Wednesday. Um, hope everyone is doing well and that the storms have not blown you away. Um, the sun's out again this, early this morning here in Arizona. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, over the last couple days, the main question from a lot of patients has been their concern about cholesterol. And I know I've gone over this with people before, but um, it seems to be an issue where many people who, well, the cholesterol is just a, a confusing concept. And uh, I realized that there was an Oreo study that was done and a bunch of people talked about the Oreo study. Uh, one of the interesting things you have to realize is that we, we've seen, I've seen in my practice for years, that patients who are doing a ketogenic diet um, will have a high LDLC. Now remember, there's two, way, there's two ways to calculate the bad cholesterol or the LDL, which is the low density lipoprotein. One is the figure wall calculation, which is the LDLC. So if you have here, if you're if you're looking at your lab that value and it says LDL-C, that's a calculated value. It's not an actual measurement. It's just a calculation based on the total cholesterol and triglyceride and those kind of things. Um, and that's what most doctors base their need for use of statin drugs on is this LDL uh, and the, 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 the number. Now the concern is that whether they realize or not, some of them do, but some of them probably don't. Uh, the LDL is actually made of three different subtypes. Um, there's big fluffy ones, there's medium sized ones, and there's small dense ones. Um, what we've seen in the literature in the last 10 years is that the size of the LDL is driven by whether or not the cholesterol particle is actually oxygen, is actually esterified. Now what that means is that an, a cholesterol, an ester is bound to the cholesterol molecule in the bloodstream and depending on that, whether that cholesterol is esterified or not depends on where the cholesterol is transported at in the bus or the larger particle. Now, the, the, the buses that transport cholesterol and triglyceride are essentially called the HDLs, the VLDLs, and the LDLs. And of each of those, there are subtypes of each of those groups. What we know is that the LDL subtype um, has the, the potential to cause plaque to form. And so, and of the LDL, it's the smallest particle. Now, the reason it's the smallest is that because inside the cholesterol, is, when the cholesterol is not esterified, the cholesterol is not pulled inside of the bus, it's, it's stuck to the outside of the bus. And if you think about buses transporting people, um, in South America, you commonly see those all of the buses that are so full that a bunch of people are on the outside of the bus rather than on the inside of the bus. And when you're riding down the road on the outside of any vehicle, it's much more dangerous than if you're inside the vehicle. So I, I tell my patients, you know, we, we don't want our cholesterol molecules to be small and dense because that means most of those cholesterol particles are on the outside of the transport uh, molecule uh, or the LDL particle. And so um, when the cholesterol is esterified, it's actually pulled inside of the, the, and, the cholesterol, and the LDL particle becomes big and fluffy. Now, what we know is that this, the small dense particles damage the arterial walls and cause plaque and atherosclerosis. There's a couple studies that show that. Um, what we and amazingly, the big fluffy particles seem to do the opposite. They actually are protective for the, the vessel, all the, even though they're LDLs. So there's the good bad cholesterol and there's the bad bad cholesterol. If that makes sense. Hopefully that is clear. So what? So rather than if you're just looking at an LDLC, you can't tell whether they're big and fluffy or whether they're small and dense. Um, if so, you have to actually measure the particle. Uh, the particle size. Now, just the number of particles doesn't tell you what that is either, because you can have a thousand, or you can have five thousand LDL particles. Um, and, and so, what's interesting is if you're predominantly using fat and protein as your fuel, you're going to have a much larger amount of LDL particles in your bloodstream, and that's what, essentially what, what was being seen with this um, Oreo cookie study. Is that you've got a, a guy who's doing keto and he's he's physically active, uh, and so he's referred to as what. A lot of the lay people call hyperresponder. Um, I think that's a stupid term because it doesn't. It, it's not. It's not. It makes it think. It makes you think that it's a. It's a. It's a, a disease process, and it is not. It's just. A, it's a normal process that I've seen for 20 years with patients. Uh, when they do low carb and they they exercise heavily, you like, and they're lean. They mean they're they've leaned up their muscle mass because their bodies are using predominantly larger amounts of fat. Well, they're using larger amounts of LDL. They're using larger amounts of HDL, and so you're going to see higher numbers of those particles and those counts. Now, um, if you suddenly eat starch, you're going to see a drop in the um, use of 
cholesterol in general and the LDL count, the C, LDLC will drop. I've seen that for 20 years in my practice. Now that's a normal thing, but all of a sudden people are identifying it and seeing it going, oh my gosh, look at this. We've been seeing this for years if you've been doing low carb diets and measuring labs and seeing that. Um, so does that mean it's bad? No. What that means is you've stopped, you've, you've used less fat, so your overall count of fat in the bloodstream drops, number one. Number two, if you were to calculate those particles, what you're going to see is you're going to see a shift in the particle size. Now, what, what I'm looking for specifically is the LDL, um, small dense LDL particle. And the predominant number of your ApoBs and your LPAs are found in the small dense particle, not the big fluffy particles. So there's three or four different ways you can measure whether those particle counts are, are problematic. Um, I just measure the LDL particle and then look at the, to see how much those, how much small dense particles there. What I commonly see is if you can get the LDL the, the LDL particle, the small LDLP under 500, usually you're reversing plaque. And that's what we shoot for in my office. I see that because when I see your, your triglyceride drops, we know that that happens. Um, but if you're, when your triglyceride is under 100, when your insulin level is dropping down closer to five or six or less, we see, we see that occur. That's the important thing. Now remember, your particle size changes every, about every three days. Um, and so if you cheat within a three-day window, uh, like I had my birthday, um, if I was to check my particle number, it's going to be higher because I had some birthday cake, and it's going to be higher for up to probably three days. And I may be storing fat and making plaque during those three-day windows. If you're cheating twice a week, you're, you're not going to see those particle numbers drop, and, and that's where people are forming plaque, and we see that happen. And so if you're doing low-carb and you're cheating twice a week, you still may not see weight loss, and you still may see plaque formation. That's one of the things that's important. So just because you're doing keto doesn't mean you're going to get better. You've got to make sure you're measuring the insulin, and you've got to make sure you're measuring the triglyceride, and you're measuring your small-dense LDL particle number uh, specifically. So there's your five-minute drive. I hope that helps give you some insight, and uh, you guys have a great morning. Take care. Bye-bye.